Hello and uh, welcome to uh, this week's episode of our Facts First podcast. Now again, this is part of our special Bangsamoro series, uh, which tackles different aspects of the uh, new Bangsamoro Transition Authority, which is of course the interim government of the new Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Now for this week, we're going to talk about uh, the proposed uh, extension of the BTA until 2025, and of course the proposed cancellation or resetting of the elections that are set uh, in 2022. So for today, we are joined by uh, the Executive Director of the Institute of Autonomy and Governance, uh, a Cotabato-based uh, think tank, Attorney Benny Bakani. Thank you for joining us on this podcast, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure, uh, Christian. And also we're joined by uh, Professor uh, Francisco Pancho Lara, Senior Advisor of International Alert Philippines. He's also a professor at the University of the Philippines as a College of Social Sciences. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yes, thank you, Christian. Glad to see you. Okay. Uh, I'd like to get a perspective coming from uh, experts like you. Those who are deeply involved uh, in issues involving the Bangsamoro. So first, let's talk about the proposals on the table. We know that the MILF, as leaders of the BTA, uh, has been trying to push... Uh, for the resetting of the elections uh, in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao from 2022 to 2025. Because the argument is that they don't have enough time to actually implement what uh, has been promised as part of the peace agreement with the Philippine government. Now, uh, let's start with the current proposals or adjustments or compromise being proposed or laid on the table. Attorney Benny. Uh, thank you, uh, Christian. So uh, just to uh, uh, provide a context no, uh, of uh, the issue on the extension of the transition. So let, let, we have to understand that the bills pending in Congress are for the resetting no, of the uh, or cancellation of the uh, uh, scheduled first regular elections. No? So the first regular elections would actually signal the establishment of the regular government, no? so which means that that is the end of the political transition and the start of the first regular government of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. No? Uh, and um, actually, you know, there's this confusion on what we really want. No? So there, uh, the, uh, the BTA in the um, resolution that uh, they passed, okay, uh, called for the extension of the transition. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and the resolution is actually silent on, on resetting the elections. But uh, apparently the general you know, uh, view is that once you extend the transition, then you also move the elections or cancel the elections because uh, you're actually extending the term of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. Okay, so if you extend the term of Bangsamoro Transition Authority, which is actually appointed, not elected, then in effect, you are actually moving the elections. Okay, and uh, the, uh, the, the proposal, that, uh, the bills that are pending in Congress um, is resetting the elections to uh, May 2025, uh, no? so to synchronize with the national and local elections as well. No? So, so, but the, uh, the, uh, the, really the, the, um, the main point there is what are we really extending and why are we resetting the elections? No? So apparently that is the, the issue now, right? Um, uh, because when you reset the elections, that's very political, no? that's very controversial. Now it looks like you know everybody agrees. Yeah, you, we need more time, you know, to set up the uh, to set up the uh, political institutions. Okay, but is that something that you can still do even under a regular government? Okay, there are those who say that yes, of course you can still do it because you cannot govern anyway unless you put up all these institutions. But the thing is, I think the issues are kind of uh, um, uh, have uh, so, uh, have kind of modeled already. Uh, so there's a need. That's why um, uh, IEG has, has been in the forefront in terms of what, what we're talking about, unpacking the issues of the Bangsamoro transition. No? So unpacking the issues, looking at interest, okay? because people um, uh, actually are kind of um, uh, mixing up all these different issues. No? And even the issue of normalization versus the political trap. No? So, yeah. so as an update, so right now the, the bills are pending in the House and uh, in the Senate. And uh, of course, the president has expressed uh, uh, his openness. Uh, and well, it depends whether that's really a support 
uh, an absolute support that uh, uh, that uh, can really push this forward. Uh, but that but what we have now is some kind of a consensus building because there are those who are opposed to uh, the uh, proposals, particularly uh, local government uh, leaders, no, of uh, okay. the provincial governors, no, so of uh, of the BARM. And that's why there is now a process of uh, dialogue. In fact, uh, the uh, uh, the hearings in the Senate, okay, on the bill has uh, have been postponed twice already. I think to give way to this uh, political dialogue, mm. okay, that is currently being uh, uh, undertaken, which for us is a very is a is a step in the right direction. No? Because okay. if we're gonna move the elections. There are interests that will be uh, uh, that uh, there will be winners and losers in this. No? There are political interests that will be affected, and it would be good that there's some kind of an, uh, that some kind of consensus moving forward. Okay, okay. Uh, for the Bangsa Bolo. Okay, I remember Professor Lara uh, wrote a very hmm. interesting uh, opinion piece regarding this push to extend the BTA. Um, talk to us about the, the, the basic arguments there and whether the BTA should be extended or that we should indeed yeah. just push through with the elections next year. Yeah, well, uh, the title of that article was Democracy's U-Turn in the Bank Samoro. And simply because the same institutions that enabled the Bank Samoro, for example, to get uh, set up and to enable the MILF and the current BTA to be put in office were undertaken through a democratic process, and that was the referendum. And they won the vote, and so you had the Bank Samoro Organic Law ratified. Lo and behold, three years later, they don't want the same process you know, to decide the transition of the Bank Samoro. The issue that was put forward there is that you know, uh, a transition process will take actually longer than three years. We knew that from the start. They should have argued that. And if they were you know, uh, not supportive of that idea, they would have fought. They should have fought that the first three years be extended to three years. But that was not what they agreed to. They signed up to a law that said that's going to take three years. Now, let me be brutally honest. No, um, I think it's a ruse. I think it's a deliberate attempt to exclude others from the transition process. And why do I say that? Because if we agree to a postponement, the cancellation of the elections, we set a precedent that can be used again in 2025. The transition isn't over. We need yeah. to extend. And because of that, you know, you lose out on the entire process of people owning the leadership of the Bank Samoro. At the end of the day, the issue is really about political legitimacy. Legitimacy cannot be only earned through an election. Indeed, other moral leaders establish their legitimacy through other means, by being a rebel leader, by uh, you know being an alliance builder, etc. But it is central to the Bank Samoro process that the person in charge of this process is elected by the people. And really, Christian, I had argued in that piece, really, that they needed it more than anything else. No? And I, I even have a very strong view that they will win if they you know, uh, indeed uh, run that election. What concerns me is why they don't want to. And I agree with Benny. No? The transition is not equivalent to the power of the MILF. Any new person who leads in the process after an election will have to implement anyway the comprehensive agreement on the Bank Samoro that's been institutionalized. He or she will govern under the same terms of implementing what was discussed, what was agreed upon in the charter but, of the DBF. Yeah. So but, of course, yeah. but of course, naturally, the MILF has a sense of ownership because they're the ones that negotiated this peace agreement, right? Now, you mentioned right. that uh, your prediction is yeah. that uh, most likely the MILF would still win in 2022 if the election I think through. so, because no other regional governor has assumed office without the mandate of Malacanang. Historically, everyone has. I'll give you an example. Nur Miswari was criticized, actually was joked for a long time because he applied for the position of governor one month before even the final peace agreement was signed. He had filed this candidacy for governor and he went through that process. 
there was still a transition going on. There was no issue about him. You know, there was no issue for him to be to get the mandate of the people. And that was the agreement then. I cannot see why the MILF thinks that in their particular case, that does not hold. That's the real problem. And then a lot of people are saying, well, probably Pancho, because they're afraid that they won't win. Well, lo and behold, that's, that's it, you know. We are in a democratic setting, and I think they should work hard to get the people's vote. But mm. I still think they strong. They stand a strong chance of, of uh, winning that election if they were to run. And they need it, really, to strengthen the sort of legitimacy they need to deal with Sinchagiani, to deal with Sakurtan in Sulu, to show, hey, we are elected by a majority of the Bangsamoro. We have a right to be here in office. Okay, uh, speaking of uh, Governor Sakurtan, I spoke with him uh, a few days ago. He said that one of the options, uh, Attorney Benny mentioned this, right, the ongoing political dialogue. I think uh, one option that was laid on the table was that uh, the MILF could expect the support from the likes of uh, Governor Sakurtan. Uh, but again, there are certain trade-offs, uh, right? So let's talk about the options on the table. Because according to Governor Tan, he was even willing to support the MILF if elections would be held in 2022. But of course, we know that there are a lot of trust issues involved here. Attorney Benny. Yes, um, I, uh, I think the, uh, based on our consultations you now with the local government officials, they're very open, you know, they're, they're politicians. And, uh, you know, and uh, I think they, uh, the, the, the bottom line is they really feel that uh, they are not given enough, okay, uh, what they call it. They're excluded. Excluded. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's the term, you know. So because yeah. at the end of the day, it's you know uh, peace. Uh, the the formula is really power sharing, power and resource sharing. You know, a principle mm. power and resource sharing in the Bangsamoro that redounds to the benefit of the constituents. I think you know that's the that's the bottom line here. Mm. And uh, I think the perception, okay, whether true or not. Is that because in the because uh, MIL is an MILF led transition, and they, and they also dominate uh, the BTA. Okay, they're a majority in the BTA. So you see that um, uh, they uh, and others feel excluded, especially local government units no? uh, leaders. And I, I think it has to do also with the fact that. Uh, uh, that the electoral code has not been even, you know, drafted, you know, and, yeah. and, and that's a source so of uh, of instability, you know. So because if you right. don't have the electoral code and you're not transparent about, you know, the, the drafting of the code and you don't consult, you don't, the people will always uh, will always have this perception that uh, that uh, you know precisely you're not. You're, you're, not, uh, you're not passing that electoral code because you don't want the elections in 2022. Do you think, you know, to, to, to be blunt about it, do you, do you guys think that they are deliberately delaying the passage no, of the saying, electoral code? That. Well, that's, uh, that's the perception. And, and you cannot blame yeah. uh, those who perceive it that way. So that's why it's important yeah, no. because this is yeah. institution building. No? So, so you build mm. political institutions and one of the, the, the two main political institutions are actually the parliament, okay, and mm, the electoral correct. system, okay. So if you look at the political transition, because as I've said, uh, we kind of mix up the, the transition, the general, you know, transition to the political transition. But actually, the, uh, the BTA is in charge of a political transition. The political transition has very, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, specific goals, and that is laying down the bureaucracy, laying the political institutions. So if if you if you if you only have three years, you could focus on those. No, so and that's why when Pancho is saying that you know actually 2022, if MILF plays its cards really well, then they actually have the advantage. Look, they they have the advantage. Over the over the electoral policies, right? So because they'll be the one drafting it, they'll be the one even to to do it. Number two is they have the United Bank Samoro Justice Party. You no, know? so if you're looking at the, uh, an, uh, an electoral system that is based on proportional system of proportional representation, because this is parliamentary system, so you elect you actually elect political parties. No, at least more than half are uh, the majority would be proportional representation. So which means that you already have 
you know, you, you, you're actually have to, you, ahead of all the others, you know. So, and then, of course, now you're also in the transition. There's this block run. Then, uh, you know, the, the, the ingredients are there if uh -huh. you play your cards well, you know. So uh, what I'm saying, are they playing their cards well? Well, that is, you know, subject to different, you know, interpretation and judgment. But uh -huh. the thing is, it's the election that actually provides, uh, you know, pull instability, okay? okay pull, yeah. Political instability. That's why, you know, both, both options now, you have the election, not have the election, they would have political and security risk. And that's why it's, what we've been saying, uh, Congress. Yeah. And that's what I've been saying, Congress. Look, you know, you have to look beyond just extension, no? Because yeah. uh, what is the reasons that are being advanced right now? These are this is a very romantic notion of transition, you know. Okay. So there's nothing magic. There's nothing magic about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing uh, magic about transition. Um, that yeah. you say that you know after this, then everything would be all right. No. Yeah. No. And, and, and yeah. So so that's that's why it's important that yeah. you so you call it unpacking. You know, unpack it. You know, the uh, these issues and really okay. and really uh, and really have uh, an address. No, otherwise. The, the the discourse would still be at the level of uh, you know uh, what you call it uh, motherhood uh, statements and romanticism, right? No, this is already governance. This is oh. politics, okay? And uh, you know this is a totally you know new rules of the of the of the game, and that's okay. why everybody has to be on that the same page with respect to yeah. the rules of the game. Okay, Pancho, uh, you, you had this you know, professor. Yeah, Lattin. yeah. You post, yeah, you post an important question, you know. Do you think it's deliberate? I'd put it this way, you no. Know? Everyone, you know, has to hold them to account to this uh, schedule for an election. If they are enabled right now by the president, by the other politicians, or worse, by the international development community, which are their number one supporters, who are willing to look the other way, you know, et cetera. There is not going to be any incentive on their part to work on the real priorities as they're doing right now. No? For example, okay, a while ago, we were in a consultation, Benny and myself, and the complaints we heard there were very direct. No? Why are they all focused on the extension and this debate when there are still so many things to do that are part of the so-called transition, including the electoral code? Or in our case, we've been argued, arguing since day one, new land issue. But no one is taking them to account for that. Eh? So there is still no bill on land. There is no law that you know will settle the claims of the Tiduray versus the claims of the Magindanaon. There is no law that will settle, prevent MILF combatants from attacking towns. No, There is no law that will prevent them from taking over all the, re the rebel camps and now owning all the land under them. Yung nangyari two days ago sa Basilan is illustrative of that. Ano nangyari? Merong umatake na, na, na MILF dahil pumunta ang military sa kanila dahil hindi sila pwedeng pumwesto dun sa lupa. Ang nangyari, nagkabakbakan. Saan ka nakita ng partner ng gobyerno na nakipagbakbakan pa sa AFP? Secondly, sabi ng ano, mga tao, bakit ganun? Hindi rin namin maintindihan. Rebel organization pa ba sila? Revolutionary organization pa ba sila? O gobyerno na sila? Kasi tingin na nga mga ulama, kasi revolutionary organization, hindi sila dapat pumayag tumakbo sa isang halalan. Eh, teka muna, sabi ko. Eh, ano bang pinasok natin dito sa usaping ito? No? Kailangan nilang maintindihan, bahagi yan. They cannot have their cake and eat it too. So they need to be made to account. It's not a question of not having time. Eh. Yun ang ini-issue nila. Naubos ang oras namin, pandemic, etc. What? You had the biggest amount of money in contrast to other governments. You had, you know, time, ample time, 20, 2019, hanggang ngayon 20. 22, hindi nyo nga ginagamit ngayon. It's not an issue of time. It's an issue of prioritizing. Eh. Yung sinasabi ni Benny, para about, manalo kayo, eh, prioritize nyo yung kailangan ninyo yung ano, tulak. Yes. How about competence? Uh, at at oh, the yes. bottom of things, do you think this is uh, oh. basically an issue of competence? Yeah, certainly. You know, Christian, you know, Benny, yung issue sa democracy is not really the most important. When you look at the stories or studies of legitimacy, it's not the democratic 
uh, facade that is important. Eh. It is showing that each one of the different groups have stakes in the new government. Ang nangyari, hindi ba ang unang-unang ginawa ng MI is to destroy all the patron-client relations by retiring the entire ARMM bureaucracy? Ang daming magagaling dyan na mga tao, hindi naman lahat dyan corrupt. Marami dyan mga magaling tao, nangawalan rin ng ano eh. Pero what is worse is, winasak mo yun, which was in the absence of a fully functional democratic system. The only way people can be included is if they had representation through patron-client relations in the bureaucracy. Eh, winasak mo yun. Ano ngayon ay pinalit mo? Saan ka naman nakakita ng bayaw? Nang ano, nang ni, 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 ni kung sino na magiging head ng isang ahensya. Siya ka makita naman ng head ng armado na nagpapatakbo ng pinansya. So it's also a question of competence. Pakita nila na talagang competent rin yung mga taong pinaglalagay nila sa mga positions doon sa loob. Kasi it's about, you're right, no? There are issues about that. I don't want to talk about them. But we've also heard of really interesting cases of rent-seeking behavior that has happened since 2019. And he laid down yan sa, ano, di ba, they're accusing ano, uh, Mujib Ataman na kailangan ng audit. And then Mujib Ataman countered them. O sige, mag-audit tayo. Na. Audit nyo kami, audit rin natin yung, ano, nyo, yung nangyari. So umabot na sa ganoon yung, yung uh, usapan dahilan dito. Because precisely of the point that you raised, no? it's not only that, it's also the issue of competence, the ability to deliver, you really need to bring in the experts, those who are capable, those with experience in those key positions, and they cannot exclude others and take that and use that as an absolute domain only of their political group. Uh, if these are this is uh, these are all part of the underlying realities in the current Bank Samora setup, where do you think the uh, the, the, the the region is headed? Because that's quite problematic. Because if you ask the likes of uh, Chairman Murad, he would always say that uh, uh, the filling up of positions at the BTA, for instance, it's always uh, about meritocracy, di ba? Sabi na, meron silang uh, online portal, talagang very... Uh, <laughs> kung baga hindi siya nasusunod in reality? Yeah. Meron akong kaya. Sabihin ko lang banggitin. Meron akong kilala, napakagaling. Ha? Dating ano, DILG, et cetera, at lahat. Na for a long period of time, inetsapera sila. Ngayon, ngayon lang sila, after three years, binabalikan. Dahil na suddenly they're discovering why itong mga taong ito pala nakakaalam. Uh, okay. Number two, yung key positions, you're talking about the key positions. Ewan ko kung sino doon ang dumaan sa portal na talagang out of the blue na expert na nakuha. Siguro si si Benny would know. Pero ako, ang ako talaga, that's the, that's the one of the most critical issues because actually, we had even raised that with them no at the interim because of the getting to win the vote do sa BOL time na yun. Uh, Christian, I think it's that's why it's very important to you know be clear about uh, the vision and goals no and and the roadmap no so that's why I I think uh, because we're mixing up the normalization track and the political track no so I think yun ang dapat early on government uh, MILF everybody should be on the same page on the issue of normalization track and the political track. of course they are interrelated no? they are interrelated but we've always been Pero, saying that the normalization track especially decommissioning okay has a different basis and that's the cab no comprehensive agreement of the bank and the bank tomorrow so, oh, so that's why that is really so if you want to be sabi nothing exclusive that's really exclusive no? between Pero, the no. and government but not for the for the government and the political transition pero Kasi Attorney Benny, yan, eh. this is already uh, the BOL. That's true. Uh, Pero Attorney Benny, it's the MILF itself that is actually not making the distinction, diba? When they yeah, uh, exactly. uh, uh, when they said that they should be extended the BTA, sila mismo nagsabi na ano eh, they don't have enough time to complete the normalization process. Kaya I understand the position of ano, Professor Lara. Parang kailan to hihinto, di ba? No, that's why for me, I would understand that that would be the position of the MI. But I don't understand why the national the national government accepts that. And the wow. international oh, development there. agencies. Yes, precisely. There. And all the others also. Oh, that's why our fear, enablers. our fear, <laughs> yes. okay, this has always been our fear, is because we are not managing expectations. 
Because if we mix this both, wala talaga tayong victories dito, even how small mm. victories are. Mm. That's why we're tra- what we've been saying all along is, no, you need to be very clear about the political transition. Okay, kapag nag-political transition ka, okay, nalagay mo, meron kang strong institutions, parliament, you have the elections, that's the peace dividend of the political track. Okay? So, di ba, yun, yun ang pinaka-importante doon, kasi Christian, it is not the BTA that is the, the sabi nga natin, that is not the platform for self-determination. Kasi appointed lang yan eh. Supposedly yeah. just to lay down all this. Ano, in fact, pag may regular parliament ka, regular parliament can undo all that the BTA has done anyway, right? But the That's importante okay. dito is yung parliament mo because that is already, the parliament is really the platform for self-determination. That's so okay. what Let's we're saying there is if you don't have the parliament after three years, then you're actually moving pa. Okay, sabihin natin. So, so, so where's yung, ang ano mo dyan is yung, where's the peace dividend of the political track? Of course, if you look at peace dividends, everybody would have some different ideas of what peace dividends are. No? So si Chairman Murad in the last hearing, ako, I would understand it. He had a long list of things that still have to be done. And I said, my God, you know, if we are going to do all these things, if that would be our milestones, nakukulang pati yung up to 2025, ano? So, okay, kasi governance na yan eh. Ang pinag-usapan ko kasing governance, that's already bottomless pit. Normalization Sige. is also a bottomless pit. Yan ang sinasabi mo doon. Oh. Kaya dapat very clear yung magpo-prioritize ka sa three Sige. years or kung mag-extension man, kung mag-extension man, sige, ano well kung defined. ito gawin? Okay. okay. I have a question for ano, for Professor Lara. Kasi y- your assessment mm. earlier was very blunt, di ba? Parang sabi nyo nga, mm. parang delivery truce yung ginagawa mm. ng MILF. Pero over the past three years or so, what do you think uh, the, the MILF as leaders of the BTA have to show? At saka, are we actually headed uh, oh, yeah. to the right direction? At number three, for instance, are they better off now? than compared yes. to during the time of the arm? At saka ang related question dyan kasi, baka naman lahat to part lang ng birth packs. I mean, you have to understand that everyone suggested. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Two points lang. Una, nangako sila at maliwanag yun na ang numero unong prioridad, first priority should be really acting on resource, land, fundamental property rights issues. Alam naman natin, the entire literature on institutional reform, property rights is central to that. That should have been a priority. Number two, it's in Abini Benny. The electoral code should have been a priority. Number three, the revenue code should have been a priority. Okay. So you're talking about revenues, you're talking about election, and then you're talking about property rights. Those are the three. No property rights legislation has come out. Neither has the revenue aspect of the law been accomplished, and neither has the electoral code. So what has what has happened in the past three years? Okay administrative code, et cetera, at lahat. Okay, yun ang mga tinrabaho nila. Did they do even well? Did they fare well in terms of the explosion of Rido? Hindi sila masyado. Did they fare well even in dealing with the pandemic? Neither were they, ano, et cetera. Sabi nga kanina, eh, ang report nila, nag-set aside kami ng budget. Hello? So ano ngayon kung nag-set kasi, nag-set aside kayo ng budget? Ang question dyan, meron ba kayo na-deliver as a result of that? So yun yung frustrations namin sa BTA no? at sa kanilang pamumuno. Kasi hindi naman nagkulang ang mga tao na tumulong sa kanila para ipasa ang BOL na ipinaglaban itong BBL panahon pa. Na ngayon, tinetreten nila na kapag kayo ay hindi sumuporta sa extension, kayo ay kalaban ng peace process. Ganun na yung ano, eh, red tagging sa amin. <laughs> Kasi we're supposed to be now enemies of the peace process. Lo and behold, suddenly, these people have forgotten ata, the role that a lot of us have played in you know, pushing, kahit ang mamasapano incident, pushing Congress to legislate a BBL, to legislate a BOL, doing political mapping, etc., and then working on the ground. Because they want, and yung nga sinasabi ni Ben, I'm so afraid, in 2025, with that kind of a you know, measure of success, they're going to ask for ano, another extension. Why? In the IRA case na lang eh, yung Irish Republican yeah, yeah. Army with the number of... It took 10 years, di ba? Ang milestone nila 10 years before the last weapon was the commission. 
And the number of IRA paramilitaries did not go beyond 3,000 to 4,000 people. Ito 40,000. Ay, nakusus, Mario Josep. E de, hanggat hindi matapos yun eh, hindi sila dapat matanggal sa posisyon. Yun ang implikasyon eh. Nitong Sige. sinasabi nito. Yeah. We're almost at the tail end of our podcast, pero I'd like to ask an attorney, Benny. I remember your group was involved in the training of the uh, various groups in the Bangsamoro, right? In terms of par- party building. And other aspects of governance. Uh, are you actually seeing that, or you're getting frustrated that uh, all the training sessions that you conducted before are not bearing fruit still? We cannot afford to be frustrated, uh, Christian. No, hindi naman ni Sasa. Hindi naman ni Sasa lang yung partido mo, Benny. Hindi kagamitin. Any education program, naman, okay? Hindi naman yung short term. Hindi naman short term yan. No? Yun nga lang, eh, kasi ang daming, ano, eh, ang daming gustong, ano, ang, ang daming, um, uh, and this is good, this is good that many want to organize political parties because this is a parliamentary system, multi-party system. Correct. It's just that because of the absence of rules, hindi mo alam kung how you will register, what are the criteria. Kaya nga sabi ko, that's very critical sana in the transition. Day one pa lang, eh talagang you have to focus na on the election kasi that's really the source of uh, conflicts, di ba, yung political. So having, uh, you know, kaya, kaya nga sa akin very important yung sharpen talaga yung, uh, yung uh, sabihin mo and uh, sabihin natin yung talagang objectives of the political transition uh, and the strategy and the roadmap. No? Kasi magka, magkakagulo-gulo talaga no? in terms of uh, expectations dito. Uh, in the end, sasabihin ko kaya nga, di ba, yung, kasi yung feeling talaga of being excluded. Okay, that's the that's the the, 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 the a, a, a big problem at the moment, no? Precisely because the way that this is designed, okay, we might call it that. Alagang ganon, eh, no? At the so people have accepted sige, three years na ganon. Ang alam mo fear ko pa dito pag nagkaroon na extension, we don't even know what the new president's ga- game plan is, no? So kasi no. alam mo sa so BOL hindi naman maliwanag talaga na majority ang MILF. No, in the that, that was an accommodation okay. by President oh, Duterte. Oh, oh. Uh, ang alam lang, MILF-led. So, of course, you can say, pag MILF-led, di kami majority, not necessarily. So, yeah. uh, pwede ikaw lang yung chief minister or interim chief minister kasi Congress has removed that ano eh, that word mm-hmm. membership. Eh. So, mm-hmm. if you're, if uh-huh. you're going to extend this and then this new president now would have a different interpretation, then uh, problema na naman tayo. No? Kaya sa akin talaga, Okay, the, the ideal, ha? the ideal is, you know, come up with a, a consensus now on leadership and transition beyond 2022, okay, with knowing fully well that the MILF must continue to be engaged in the process of peace process and governance. Kaya nga okay. dito, very key yung role ni Presidente dito. No? Kasi whether you like it or not, eh talagang siya naman ang pwedeng mag-referee niyan. Ano? So Congress and the Senate have started doing that. Ano? Yung, yung mga pag-uusap. Uh, yun nga lang ang problema. MILF now is on the defensive. Ano? <laughs> Kung sana ginawa yan uh, beforehand. Gusto, Kasi, gusto ko lang yung sabihin na. Oh, But, hindi. What, yeah. what I'm saying here is that pwede mo namang ikaw ang, mag, ang magdala niyan eh, no? Kasi meron mm. kang Council of Elders. Di ba yung Council of uh, Elders supposedly composed of all these uh, ano, local government uh, officials also with the BARM. So that would have been... Uh, that would have been ano, no, the, the platform where all these things can uh, be discussed. Yeah. But anyway, hindi okay. nagawa yun. Uh-huh. Sige. Okay, parting words from okay. ano, Professor gusto lang, Lara. Gusto, gusto ko lang pumasok sa Gleta. Uh, patunayan nila sa amin na hindi to ruse at hindi to deliberate. Pakita nila sa amin na noon pa lang simula nito, nakita na nila yung kahalagahan nitong eleksyon na ito. Kung pakita nila sa amin kung pinaghanda nila yung electoral code kasi isa yung sa napakahalagang panukat yun eh ng kung talaga or whether they went into this at the outset knowing that they will argue for an extension even as early as before. Number two, ang kaligayahan siguro namin at ang uh, pag, ano, satisfaction namin is nabuksan ito sa wider discussion. Kasi dapat ito ilulusot na lang ito eh. 
kasunduan na lang, sila-sila na lang, pag-uusapan with the president, etc. The most dangerous thing, I think, for the MI is that their legitimacy rests on the president, current president, and a bunch of international and domestic development, financial, and different, ano, who are enabling their presence in office, no? But they are not getting the sort of legitimacy that they get from the Bangsamoro people. Hanggat ganyan yung situation, mananatili yung ganitong klase ng weaknesses sa governance. Masaya kami sa alert na kung ano man mangyari, magkaroon man sila ng bargaining, magkaroon man sila ng ano, kasunduan, etc. Sabihin na natin tumuk- tumiklop yung elites, tumiklop yung mga gobernador at pumayag sila The point is na buksan nito at yung sinasabi ni Benny mangyayari, magkakaroon ng siguro kaunting power sharing as a result of this. Hindi na siguro magiging that exclusionary yung situation. Pero tumitindi kami sa position that the sooner there is an election, the better for them as well. For the MILF, for the BTA as well. And we are confident that if they were to prepare now, you know, that they would really win a regional election in 2022. And then okay. they get the best uh, uh, sort of uh, engagement and legitimacy from the public. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us uh, on this podcast. Always a pleasure talking with Attorney yeah. Benny Bacani and Professor pa- Pancho Lara. Yeah. It was a very uh, engaging discussion. <laughs> Medyo mainit si, ano, si Professor Lara. <laughs> well, thank you very much guys Ito for joining us on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Lumabas yung frustration eh. No? <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for okay. listening to this podcast. Uh, don't forget that this podcast is also available on YouTube. And you can also catch this on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Stitcher. Until next week, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye.